Okay, welcome to Saxon Algebra 1 3rd edition, lesson 41. This lesson is going to be how about adding like terms and rational expressions and about two-step problems, so a two-part lesson. All right, let's look at like terms for a minute. Here I have 4x plus 2x. These are like terms because they have the same variable, x, to the same power, both are just plain x, so we can add those to get 6x. Alright, when I have 4x squared plus 2x, these are not like terms. Although they have the same variable, those variables are to different powers. One is x squared and one is x, so you cannot add those. Alright, now when you have something like this, you need to do your distributive property first and then add any terms that may be alike. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So 2x and 4x are like terms. We can add those to get 6x, and 6 minus 4, those are like terms, and we add those and get 2. So 6x plus 2. All right, groups of like terms. Um, all right, see, 2x and 3x are like terms. Negative 6x is a like term. Square root of 5x, all of those are like terms. 3 times x plus 3 times 2. That 3x would be a, a like term there. All right, now, here, you've got x squared, x squared, x squared. Those are like terms. x cubed y, x cubed y, x cubed y. These are like terms. Negative 5xy and 3yx. Now, even though it may not look like it, these are like terms because they both have x to the first, y to the first. And that's it. It doesn't matter if they're not in the same order. All right, now, all of these are like terms. These are not like terms. 4x, 4x squared, 4x cubed. They all have x, but they're all to different powers. 4x cubed y, 4xy cubed. They both have an x and a y, but the x is cubed in this one and the y is cubed in this one, so they're not alike. 4x cubed y, 4x cubed y cubed. Again, they were alike until it got to right there. And that made them not like terms that could not be added. All right, so this says simplify by adding like terms. Now remember, in the other lesson um, a day or two ago, I told you that it's going to be important that you know how to manipulate and maneuver those exponents around because now you're going to have to start doing that to see if some things are indeed like terms. All right, so if I move this x to the third up, it's going to become negative 3. So 1 minus 3, I'm going to have b x to the negative second over y to the negative second. Or I could write it as b y squared over x squared. Get everything positive. All right, minus 3 b <clears throat> y squared. And if I bring this down to make it positive, it would be x squared on the bottom. <clears throat> and I can see that I've got 3by squared over x squared. This and this are like terms. If there's no number in front, you're going to assume it's a 1. All right, let's see about this one. Plus 4. If I bring this b up, it becomes b. I'll leave that y squared right there and leave the x squared down here. Everything's positive. 
So plus 4BY squared over X squared. So if I add these, I've got 4 minus 3, which is 1, plus 1, I would have 2BY squared over X squared as my final answer. All right. If I bring this b to the negative 3 up, it's going to be plus 3. So I'm going to have b to the 4th on top. And if I bring this one down, it becomes a to the positive 3. We'll put a 1 in front of that. Plus 2. And I've got the b to the 4th and the a cubed down here. And I can add 1 plus 2 is 3b to the 4th over a cubed as my final answer. Isn't this fun? All right, now let's talk about two-step problems. Here's the first step. If x plus 3 equals 7, what is the value of x minus 8? Well, the first step then is going to be I have to solve for x. I have to know what x is. So I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides and I'm going to get x equals 4. So now that I know what x is, x is 4, what is the value of x minus 8? Well, it would be 4 minus 8 equals negative 4. And this would be the answer to my problem. All right, let's look at this one. X minus 5 is 7, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Solving a simple equation, x equals 12. What is the value of x plus 4? If x is 12, x plus 4 is 16, and that is the answer to my question. All right, let's work some practice problems. It doesn't tell you in your directions how everything has to be. So I usually find it helpful to have everything positive and go for that. All right, so I'm going to put a 1 right here. And I've got 1y over x squared plus 3y over x squared minus 5xy. Now, this term and this term are like terms and can be added. So 3 plus 1 is 4y over x squared. This cannot be added to anything, so I simply bring it down. And this is my final answer. All right, and B, if I bring this nine, negative 9 up, it becomes positive 9. And that gives me B to the 11th. If I bring this A down, it becomes A to the 8th. Put a 1 in front of that, minus 4, B to the 11th, A to the 8th. Plus, now, here I've got a different term because I've got b to the 11th here and b to the 5th here. If I bring this 5 up, I'm going to subtract. It's going to be minus 5. So 11 minus 5 is 6b to the 6th over a to the 8th. So here, these are not, this term is not like these two. So I can't add them, even though they've got the same denominator. All right, so I'm going to say 1 minus 4 is 3b to the 11th over a to the 8th plus 6b to the 6th over a to the 8th. Okay? Two-step problems. If x plus 7 equals 2, what is the value of x plus 3? 
Now you may say, I, I know you all. I can do that in my head. I still want to see the work. X is equal to negative 5. X plus 3. If X is negative 5 plus 3, my answer is going to be negative 2. And finally, if x minus 6 is 4, what is the value of x minus 5? Well, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. x is equal to 10. x minus 5. 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. And that's my final answer. Good job. I'll see you back the next time for Lesson 42.